Hello friends. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, but check out this rainbow. I guess you can't see it very well, but in real life, it's quite something. <laughs> I heard this, uh, this sermon on, on rainbows, you know, the, the Noah story a while back. Uh, this, this is about John chapter 11, but while we're looking at a rainbow, I wish you could see that as well as I could. Um, he was talking about, you know, the rainbow, we all know it's God's sign that he'll never flood the world again. But uh, in a sermon by Tim Keller years ago, he said that when you read it in the original language, it doesn't say rainbow because there is, there is no word for rainbow. It just says bow, as in like, like a bow and arrow. And he says purposefully, if you look at the bow, it's pointing up. As if to say that not only next time I'm going to cleanse the world, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, wipe out humanity. He's going to do it through, uh, essentially, self. he's going to die for us. And he said that that's a sign that, that God was pointing to Jesus and, and how, and how he, d he dies for the, for the sins of the world. Anyways. Just wanted to mention that because when I see a rainbow now, I'm reminded that, that Christ died for me. Anyway, we are here in John chapter 11. This is uh, the story of Lazarus. And it's a pretty interesting story if you, if you dig in deep. But essentially, there was Lazarus and he had two sisters, Mary and Martha. You know, you may have read about them before. Mary is the one that says in this chapter that that anointed Jesus' feet. So that's that's Mary. And then Martha mentions the story about them when they had Jesus over. And Mary was, was sitting just listening to Jesus. And Martha was like, Jesus, <laughs> have Mary, have Mary help me you know, do stuff in the kitchen. And Jesus is saying, no, 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 Mary has chosen what's better. She's, she's listening to me, you know. The, getting the word straight from God is more important than, than being a good host and, and, and eating. So anyways, they have a brother named Lazarus. At some point, she sends him a letter saying, Lazarus is very sick. And this is something I feel like I skip over when you read the story. You know, you, you have the highlights, but they have this communication back and forth through messages where Jesus says, don't worry, this is not going to end in death. He stays for another couple of days for, uh, on purpose. And then everybody kind of gathers around Jesus and he says, hey, Lazarus is asleep and I'm going to wake him up. And they're all thinking, what's the big deal? And he says, you know, they said, if he's asleep, you know, we can wake up. And he said, okay. Lazarus is dead. And they're all like, oh, that's a different story. Like, what can we do about this? You know, what, <laughs> what's the point? You know, it's interesting because they're like, you know, if we go back, everybody wants to kill you there. So why would we go, why would we go back now, even if he's dead? And uh, it's, it's interesting that Thomas points out, he's like, well, let us go too, so that we might also die. So they go, they go. And what's interesting about when he gets there is that he talks to Mary and he says, and oh, she says to him, you know, Jesus, if, if you were here, he wouldn't have died. You know, they'd had that correspondence, you know, he says, it's not gonna lead to death and it, and it did. And Jesus said, now I think it's important to point out a couple of things here. One is that Jesus has done miracles all throughout this book. I'm reminded of in the beginning of Jesus' ministry, he was talking to Philip and he's, or Philip and, and Nathaniel. And he says, you know, you believe me because I told you I, I was there with you under the fig tree. He's like, you're going to see a lot more than that. But when Jesus does these miracles, there's always kind of a, a point to it. Like it's, it's showing 
it's not just a miracle just just to heal someone when john is pointing out these miracles they're miracles with with meaning they mean something more than just just the fact that jesus did something miraculous so you get the meaning from the conversation that he has with mary and he goes up to mary and he and he says he says another i am statement now there's i am statements all over this as well you know in the last chapter he was saying i'm the i'm the door you know i am the good shepherd he says i am i am the light and i am you know he he's He's making these these I am station uh, statements that that are very profound and, and that we really need to understand. You know, I know a lot of people have done full Bible studies on on just all the different I am statements in the Book of John, and I think that's really really great and amazing. But this one, I think, is the most significant. As Jesus looks at Mary, I'm sorry, no, he looks at Martha, and he says. I am the resurrection and the life. And he says, He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And he who lives and believes in me will never die. Very interesting statements. It's, it's kind of a lot to unpack. But, but we are made alive in Jesus. He is... He is the resurrection, but he's also the life. Like, we get our, our eternal life from Jesus. You know, he's the only way that we can experience eternal life. And we, we get it from him. He is the life, but he's also the resurrection. He is, he is the way by which we, we are made alive. And so he's talking about, he's talking about this spiritual life. Now, it's when you say spiritual life, I, I feel like that makes us feel like that it's something lesser than a physical life. It's something more, you know, when we are resurrected, we are going to have a physical body. We are going to have, you know, a, a physical world around us and it will be eternal. But the spiritual side of it is the more, is the more important part. So we are, we are going to, to, to be risen on the last day. And, and Martha even says this, like, I know that he'll be risen on the last day. You know, I know that someday there's going to be a resurrection where we all have physical bodies and we all are present with the Lord. And she says, I know this to be true. And he says, I'm the resurrection and the life. You know, whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in, in me, shall never die. It's eternal. And so they move on from that and he talks to Mary. Now I think it's interesting that when he talks to Martha, he says this this long speech, there's this there's this conversation. But he speaks to Mary and she says basically the same thing that Martha said. She said, if you were here, this wouldn't have happened. You know, you could have saved our brother and now he's dead. And the response between Mary and Martha is so different. Because with Martha, it was a conversation. With Mary, it says Jesus wept. And I think that's important too. You know, when, when we go through this life and some things have happened, there is a tendency on our part to say, to say, you know, they're in a better place. There's, <laughs> there's more going on here. You know, there's, there's going to be a resurrection. You know, this isn't bad. This is good. That's what, that's what our tendency is to, to just make everything better and ju just fix it, fi fix it. But Jesus goes up to Martha and says, says that. Jesus goes up to Mary, and he weeps. And that's what we need to do with people who are weeping, people that are dealing with, with loss, because it is hurtful. It, it is hard. You know, everything in this life is not just happiness and roses. You know, th this life can be very difficult, and it's okay to weep with those who are weeping. It's okay to just, <laughs> to just feel that emotion when it happens. 
you know, here Jesus is, and he already knows what he's going to do next, and yet he weeps. He weeps for himself, he weeps for Martha, he weeps for the situation, he, he, he weeps, having all the hope and knowledge in the world that, that everything's going to be just great in the end. Jesus weeps. So he goes over to the tomb and he says, Lazarus, come forth. Now before that, I think there's something funny that happens. They say, you know, he has been four days dead. You know, in the, in the old English, it says, he stinketh. Lazarus stinketh. We don't want, <laughs> we don't want to smell it. It's interesting that he was four days dead, and this is significant too, because there was a belief back then that someone who dies, their, their spirit kind of hovers around them for three days, but not four. After the third day, they go away. You know, there's no spirit left around him. But he has been four days dead. He stinketh. And Jesus says, come forth. And he comes right out and they say, unbind him. So, you know, when he says this doesn't end in death, you know, he was right. I see it. Oh my gosh. Someone's pointing out the rainbow again. Look at that. <laughs> Hi. So we'll leave it at that. We'll leave it with this gorgeous rainbow and the, the remembrance that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. You know, his, his death was, was our resurrection. That is the way that we receive eternal life. So we needed to trust in that. You know, there's more to be said about this chapter, but I will leave it that. That is John chapter 11. Have a great day.